Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel, The Theoretical Doctor Audio Blogs. In this video, I will talk about the types of wards that we as house officers are being exposed to and allocated to during our service in the ONG posting. The link to the article of this audio blog is available in the description below if you would prefer to read on it instead. Otherwise, let's begin. The Obstetric and Gynecology Department in Sarawak General Hospital consists of five wards in total, four of which are situated in the main building while one, which the gynecology ward, is situated in the side building. The first one, labor ward. The labor ward and PAC, Pregnancy Assessment Center, is located on the fourth floor of the main building. Pregnant mothers who are stable and came in presenting with gynecological issues are referred to the PAC first. It is basically the emergency department solely catering to mothers and women with gynecological issues. The labor ward is situated in the same floor as the PAC but situated at the back of PAC. Women in active phase of labor requiring augmentation of labor or who are unstable requiring close monitoring are usually placed here. The second one, Maternity 1 and High Dependency Unit HDU. The High Dependency Unit HDU is located within the Maternity 1 ward and it is situated on level 3 of the main building. Postpartum mothers are usually transferred here upon delivery. Patients who are transferred to the high dependency unit are usually post-operative patients requiring completion of magnesium sulfate over 24 hours or post-operative patients who have bled more than one liter intraoperatively. Besides that, patients who have undergone classical cesarean section or hysterectomy are being monitored here as well. The third one, maternity 2, the antenatal ward. Mothers who are admitted from PAC but yet to be in active phase of labor or perhaps electively admitted are monitored here. This ward can be a rather intimidating place to work in, mainly because should there be any acute emergencies on the cardio tocograph monitoring, the medical officers or the on-call team are not there since they are in the labor ward and as house officers, it is our duty to monitor the CTG and to inform immediately for any issues besides attending to the other issues such as spontaneous rupture of membrane as well as checking the os opening of the patients should they complain of strong contraction pain and the feeling of bearing down. The fourth one, maternity tree. Similar to maternity one, this ward is also known as the postpartum ward. Postoperative patients who have underwent lower segment cesarean section, LSCS, post spontaneous vaginal delivery patients or post vacuum assisted delivery patients are usually transferred here if not to maternity one. It is a ward that can get rather busy during morning since the rate of patient turnover is extremely high as post-SVD patients are usually discharged the following day itself if they are stable. The fifth and final one, gynecology ward. This is the last and final ward in the ONG department. This ward is located on level 5 of the side building. As the name suggests, patients with gynecological issues such as miscarriages, stillbirth, abnormal uterine bleeding, and gynecological oncology related issues are being being monitored here. Thank you for listening to this audio blog. Do stay tuned for more which will be available every Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Remember to click on the subscribe button as well as the bell button so you won't miss out on any upcoming audio blogs.